Welcome back and thank you for still staying there with us. If you're just joining the program, this is Cosmopolitan Market on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network. If you're just tuning into the program, probably you just picked your remote and tuned into Channel 193 on Star Times on NCBN. Of course, you have missed some part of the program, missed the Cosmopolitan Market News. But then again, it's time for the discussion segment of the program. And my guest is right here with me in the studio. He is Emmanuel Okoliko. He is, an, he is an economist and also a public affairs analyst. Welcome to the program, Emmanuel. Good morning. Good, good to morning. be here. It's good to have you join me on the program today. Thank you. I know you must have been following situations, especially with the food blockade and food strike issue. I want you to tell me when you heard that there was a food strike, because I was having a short conversation here with one of my cameramen and he was telling me that he did not even know that there was a strike for food. And I, I, I had to ask him, where are you living in? Are you living in a hole? I would not call his name out now, not to bring him <laughs> out. But when you heard of a food blockade or a food strike situation, what resonated with you? Well, when I heard food blockade, yes. it, uh, it resonated with me like uh, one of the flashpoints of uh, a deteriorating system. You know, we have a systemic rot. It's a systemic rot flashpoint. I say flashpoints because uh, sometimes we do not treat symptoms and uh, expect to get results. Mm. So these are not just the food blockade, it's just a chariot, it's just uh, a superficial manifestation of uh, what really our problem is. So it is one of those things, one of those flashpoints, one of those manifestations of the fact that there's a systemic rot, the fact that some sections of the of the country are uncomfortable with the, the other section of the, uh, of, the, of the country, the fact that they, they, they threat to uh, that marriage called the amalgamation in 1914 is still hiding its mountain, that uh, uh, are we really ready to stay together? It speaks a lot of, uh, it speaks loudly against the unity of Nigeria, mm -hmm. the entity called Nigeria, the Nigerian project, and the belief, the gospel. They we have been chanting the chorus of uh, uh, restructuring one Nigeria, we are one, we are, Nigeria is an in, uh, uh, indivisible entity and all of that. But when within the same country, between the south and the north. That is why you don't blame your cameraman for not even being in the know. Mm. Because in sincerity, in the practical sense of it, there is no blockade. There can't be blockade because there is no boundary. There are no borders between the north and the south. It's not different countries. How do you mean there are no borders? Because is, then again, if you meet the geographers or, mm. or the town planning people, they will tell you that, oh, this is where Kogi State stops. This mm. is where the Federal Capital Territory when starts. I say so borders, I when mean, you mean there, there are no borders, what do you There mean? are no international restrictions. And so whoever comes to say, uh, I prevent or I restrict movement from one part of the country to another, mm. is only a violation of the fundamental human right of that person. Mm -hmm. Also, who produced to keep? if uh, it is a unanimous decision, if it's in the interest of the farmers, actually, why would the farmer produce, harvest, push them to the south, and then somebody goes to block them about around Jeba and say, do not move. And mm. the trucks were there. Mm. So it shows that there is some, there's more to this that meets the eye. The other things, it, 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 it appears more like a reprisal uh, 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 or, or uh, a reactionary response to something else that we need to know. Okay, now, it, I'm, I'm getting the fact that you're talking about the, the food blockade or food strike, so to speak, being a surface a surface on the a surface covering to a bigger to an problem. underpinning yes yes so a bigger problem now i want to ask you now what is the underpinning problem now for you as far as i'm concerned and as far as every sincere nigerian is concerned the problem is not just beginning today it has been here with us for a very long time and it started manifesting since uh, i think about 2012 when kidnapping started when uh, attacks uh People go to farm and they are insecure. People are scared of traveling from one part of the country to the other. As we speak, the northerner is suspicious of the southerner. You know, we have one Nigeria. We claim to, to believe in the gospel of one entity, one Nigeria, the Nigerian project. Yes. Yet, the northerner is uncomfortable with the southerner. The headsmen, farmers clashes. This has been on ground and had not been treated promptly mm. 
mm. because of the, the feeling that the, the farmer does not feel uh, attended to promptly, and the fact that the, the headsman, for instance, does not feel attended to properly, both of them want to take to the streets. Both of them want to uh, take laws and powers into their hands. And what I see here is the fight between the North and the South. Who really owns Nigeria? Are we going to divide? Are we set to stay together? These are the questions that are underpinning this, uh, these manifestations. And so we have had insecurity. Yeah. Insecurity has got to the point that people are so scared. They have vehicles. They can no longer travel. They can't even drive. Today you hear declarations that uh, we are winning the war. And by the next day, Somebody is arrested, somebody, somebody, somebody is uh, abducted, somebody is kidnapped. You see banditry going on and on and all of that. And when people cry and shout, please come to our aid. Listen to Governor Tom of Benue State, for instance. If you are going to cover, like you're talking about boundary. That's why I say, I am confused. The whole thing is, you, you'll be flummoxed when you hear, uh, 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 you hear a uh, food blockade from the north to the south. What, what is the north? Who, who, what part of the Nigeria forms the north? Benue is supposed to be part of it, isn't it? Yes, Benue is food central. basket of the nature yes. uh, of the nation. So if Benue is in the north and the governor of Benue State has been shouting fire, even the crowded theater, mm -hmm. then is Benue uh, with the north in this fight? Is Niger with the north in this fight? Is Kwara with the north in this fight? Is Kogi with the north in this fight? So it is just a handful of uh, individuals who have their misgivings. We had the sh uh, Shasha market, market crisis, crisis, and then we had answers. And some section of the country feels that uh, we lost lives, we lost properties. The other section too lost properties. And then this session comes up to say to hold government to ransom. And the best way to talk to government is to go to the street and ask talk, uh, uh, traders and travelers to turn back. Do you can you imagine uh, the level of loss? Post harvest especially, losses. Yes, especially, yeah, that was yeah. what I was going to talk about. Because then again, beyond the issue of social cohesion that you're talking about, talk, talking about the underpinning issue of probably there's, the, there's a thin line somewhere or a very, a very tiny line that might cut any, any, any moment we have issues like this come up. There's also the economic aspect because we, I, I was following the conversation on social media and I, I, I saw tweets particularly from people who stay in, in the north talking about how the prices went down to all-time lows. And mm -hmm. in the South, you hear responses of saying that the prices of these goods and this, this foodstuffs, I beg your pardon, foodstuff have become very, very expensive. Now, I want to ask you, taking from the fact that we saw the governor of Kogi State, Governor, Hoya, governor Yahaya Bello, oh, yes. meet with the, the members of these associations, or stakeholders in this value chain, and the ban has been lifted. For you, what are the lessons that we have learned, if you feel we have learned any? If you ask me, and like I always say, I, if I was very sincere to you, we are yet to, to show uh, any form of lesson learned. We have not learned lessons. I have, I, have not, I have not seen anything. What, you see, like I said, manifestation, you talk about uh, moving away from the social cohesion. Mm. It is all about social cohesion. Mm -hmm. It is not about any other. We talk about economic, uh, the economic variables, talking about uh, the North. Uh, having a fall in prices and then you have a hike in prices in the south. These are just temporary reactions, responses to what is happening. It is not intended. It was not intended to produce and then uh, you cannot sell, they begin to perish and then all of that. These were not intended, but they are just coming as, uh, just like our byproducts in the production sector. So these are just things that are coming, uh, that's why I call them flashpoints. Oh, it, is all it is all about the social cohesion. The North and the South are not willing to stay together, are not ready to stay together because you want there's, to a that, there's a lot of distrust, there's a lot of distrust, a lot of suspicion. Yes. People are, are, have lost confidence and trust in the leadership of the Nigerian uh, state. The entire state architecture needs to be completely uh, looked into again. Okay. Needs to be looked into again. You see, <laughs> if you build houses, if you build infrastructures, mm -hmm. you give people cars, and they cannot drive with their eyes, uh, cannot sleep with their eyes uh, closed, they are not safe. You see, the instinct to, to survive, to live, is a very powerful one for every human. And so, if you add, we have a lot of insecurity issues now, and the, the a handful, like I say, a handful of individuals who feel they have some misgivings or they have been uh, maltreated and all of that are coming to 
to put on reactions, say reactionary responses, uh, uh, to pull government to act. Because they feel if we do not twist the arm of government, government will not respond. And the, the other section who uh, are yet to speak will definitely come up with their own reaction. What could be, which is very unprecedented, you don't even know what uh, that, that reaction could mean. So I'm not interested in uh, price hike or the fall in prices, those things will stabilize with time. But although it, it translates to a lot of losses, yeah. there's a lot of loss, it's going to affect our GDP, GDP is calculated per capita. Yes. You know? So if nothing comes to me as an individual, then GDP will definitely crumble. Uh, production, in the production theory, production cycle ends when, it's, when consumption takes place. Mm -hmm. So the food produced is not consumed. So we must look at all of this and say that government needs to pay attention to prompt response to leadership issues leadership is about building hopes people have lost hope they have lost confidence they have lost trust that's the lesson we must learn Emmanuel, which I I say, to also, sorry to sorry to cut in i want to ask you now in what models do you think will work now talking no. about rebuilding hope rebuilding we, we we understand that there is a public trust deficit in the country yes now what models do you think would work to help bring about a renewed hope and also reinstill re re trust in the hearts of citizens especially for the leadership of the state now government the people the people is central if the people is central in leadership the people need to hear from the government whenever it up as promptly as possible the, the, the gap we're having here in this uh, scenario is the fact that people keep crying and crying and they do not hear the response from government. Government needs to, when I say government, I'm not looking at leadership. I, I want to say that we have had this for about five days. The president has not addressed the nation. People want to listen to the, you know how powerful it is to hear the president talk to, to, to the people. I understand. You know how powerful it is. But then, Mr. Emmanuel, so people will ask you, we have a minister of agriculture, yes? Oh, yes. We have a minister of agriculture. If we have a minister of agriculture, then uh, do we, and the minister comes up and say, this is what the case is, and this is what the case is. Do we then still need the president to do a national address? See, it is, if we say this, it looks like we do not know the power, the energies behind the address of the president of the nation. We are the Maya of our season, of our experience in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So there's a systemic rot here. And the, this, the security problem is going to the point that this one is food terrorism. This one is, is, is ter mm. I call it terrorism. Food yes. terrorism. Oh, that's, terrorism. That's a new, that's a new terrorism. addition to my yes. month's register. <laughs> it's terrorism because uh, it is criminal. It is yes. terrible for yes. you to, criminal, to come actually. and want to uh, take food from people. True. You, you are True. taking a means of livelihood God. and people will definitely react. Now, the president has is the boss of so uh, of different sectors because it cannot be everywhere at, at the same time. Yeah, but it was a, there was a particular time the president had to be boss of a particular ministry because he felt that his presence was very necessary at that He's time. He's actually still boss of the ministry. It, good. Yes. I'm talking about the time he took that decision. Yes. So it is time. What we have now is a state of emergency, of security emergency now. So the people need to hear more from their president. People need hopes rekindled because if we must stay as one Nigeria, in line with economic principles, comparative cost advantage is, it, is, is something that we cannot do without. The, the North have some advantages, the South has some yes. advantages, and yeah. so we must continue to, to exchange so that my, uh, businesses can, can, can grow. Yeah, but what, 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 what is the South saying? Uh, it's an eye-opener. Now we begin to uh, boost local production. You took me to the Ministry of uh, agriculture i didn't really want to go there because i want to dwell on security right. and, and dwell on leadership failure and dwell on systemic rot but how far can the ministry minister of agriculture boost the hopes and confidence of people when the ministries of agriculture that we have are only a chariot it's just uh, you come to see broken down tractors that you do not know if they are going to work Farming and agriculture is not being mechanized. The food we eat here is on, it's on record. That is produced by peasant farmers who use their hands and hoes and cutlasses. 
it is not by the intervention the so-called interventions that we see are uh, from the cbn from wherever loans and all of that all these things are uh, are just uh, uh, are swallowed up in the sincerity that we are used to it's a lot of insincerity everywhere because there's a sincerity even when you you, you churn out policies and programs in the name of uh, soft loans and credit facilities and all of that yes. and the roads that lead to the farms the rural roads are not opened mm -hmm. infrastructure comes infrastructure comes in. the roads are still what they have been before i was born they are not post post harvest facility uh, storage facilities like we say okay these people produce they can struggle to produce but it, how do they store this you can imagine the, kind, the, the amount of loss that we, we have recorded now because these people do not even have a place to store those things and so what option do they have like you're talking about falling prices you have no option if you have a if you bought an, an, an handset for a uh, handset for a uh, hundred thousand naira and you have no alternative than to sell for fifty thousand naira. You could yeah. even buy it for forty thousand naira. So they, they are they are just at the mercy of what is going mm -hmm. on. But I tell you that it is only it is only going to be temporary because people are struggling and learning to live by the trends as a manifest. So as this has manifested now, because this uh, association under whatever guise. I say it is temporary because it is not the only, I say there are no boundaries, there are no borders, it is not a, a, an international thing. So there are other routes uh, through which food could still get to some persons who want to get them. Yeah. And then gradually things will begin to normalize and stabilize. You remember the, the dichotomy between Keynes, the Keynesian and the classical economic analysis, when Keynes says, oppose the, 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 the gospel of intervention, just like the governor of Gobi State had, had done. But the classicals will say, with time, so things will normalize, yeah. things will take shape, prices will just, and all of that. We may not be able to wait till that time. But I tell you that the South, the South, South, South East, and all of that are becoming more aware that if this social cohesion is not going to work, that means comparative cost advantage should not be discussed. If it should not be discussed, then let us go to farms. Let us boost. If I need meat, if I must eat uh, meat, let me begin to farm. Uh, because to. I was going to ask you now, because I was listening to an interview with one of the stakeholders in Agrik, and he actually said that this might actually be a blessing in disguise. Of course it is. It's a blessing in disguise because for a very long time, the South has depended so much on, on the North for food supplies. But we must not lose sight of the fact that it is not all from the from the north. There are so many things we get also from the south yes. to the north. So it is that's why the comparative cost advantage comes in. But at this point, it's an eye opener. Since the people have seen that uh, uh, they have no confidence in leadership providing the basic amenities, the basic inputs, fertilizers. You talk about fertilizer sources and all of that. It is swallowed up. It ends in pockets of people who do not have farms. And then you want to supply fertilizers. It doesn't get to the people who actually pro produce the food that we eat. Well, then the question so for me is, how can we stop this culture? Because this thing you have said, I've spoken with some experts in the agri different fora, a different fora, and they have said that this, they have reiterated what you just said, that these imputes don't really get to the smallholder farmers. Yes. So how do we end that? Since I said it's a systemic rot. You cannot hold on to a particular thing. You know, when the system is not, you know, it's a flow. Mm -hmm. When government makes an, an announcement, a declaration, we're going to do subsidy, we're going to supply fertilizers, we're going to do, provide inputs, we're going to give tractors, we're going to mechanize whatever, and all of give subsidies. And then somebody sits in his house and tries to corner this thing. That is corruption. Yes. So when corruption begins to go to the level where man uh, displays gross inhumanity to fellow man mm -hmm. when greed is so heightened to the point that one person wants to take as much as will be enough to feed himself and the generations yet unborn then the suffering continues it lingers the state security architecture needs to be visited security here is all-encompassing and also pervasive it is not just limited to a particular it's not about just banditry and all of that security here has to do with the financial sector monitoring and uh, 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 inspection and all of that yes. all okay. this needs to but when there is gross insincerity on the part of those who mute and design the policies to the point of implementation 
then sincerity takes the day. And as long as there's sincerity, all we have are flash points of corruption. Mm. So as long as corruption lingers, governments have a role to play. And it's about leadership. I continue to come up to leadership. Leadership in the sense of boosting the hope. People have lost confidence. That is why end SARS protest. People came up and said, what uh, SARS should go away. But in all sincerity, were people just out because they wanted SARS out of the way? People came up. Some of us went out to see, to meet with people, protest the protesters. And then you hear them say, we do not have light. Mm -hmm. We don't have water. But it, the theme was NSAS. Then the pro pro protests continued to the, linger to the point that lives were lost. And the protesters, in fact, they, they drew the attention of the international community. This is unfair. We are treated unfairly. We are simply protesting. Till now, people do not feel prompt response on the part of uh, leadership. So integrity is being lost. And as we speak, people are ready to take powers, laws into their hands. Now we say we have about 19 northern states when it comes to political advantage. But when it comes to, uh, uh, when it comes to uh, power sharing, yes. it is we want to get advantage. And so we say we are 19 northern states. But we want to pick who goes for us. We begin to go back, back, up north. We we'll go to go to the to, to the to the to the to the, to the Fulanese, house of Fulanese and all of that, and then we we we'll show this other part of the, the, the nation the way out. We call them the middle belt. We call them the the, the, the the north central. At some point, it is no longer one entity from that point. So there is I see sincerity at every insincerity at every point. That is why government must display that sincerity, that that uh, that readiness and commitment to delivering the goods to the people. As long as you can boost the hopes of people, there are different platforms that brought this government on board. People waited and waited to see commitment. Commitment. Are you aware that people cannot go to farms and then come back alive? I've seen situations myself in Benue then. When people go to farms and then uh, they are attacked. At the end of the day, we play down on those things. You could see military presence. After a few days, they go back. And then what they tell them is nobody should possess firearms. It's illegal to possess firearms and all of that. And these people may be possessing these things, these uh, arms, just for, for self-defense and all of that. And then tomorrow again, you see another attack. So people have lost confidence. And as we speak, Amotekun is, 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 is there on one side. IPOB and the other agitations are all there. Mieti Allah is shouting and talking with all audacity. And so... If Nigeria must continue to stay here, if we must have, you know, that's why I keep talking about the social question. If there must be Nigeria in 2023, then the uh, leadership must come to book, must come to the drawing table and look at this state security apparatus and see how we can boost hope and confidence in the people. Okay, I, I, I truly understand where you're coming from because then again, for the economy to thrive, we need to ensure that the country is safe and secure. It's safe because production will drop. Yes, and when production yes. drops, what does that tell us? Production drops, consumption is going to drop. Supply is not going to match with demand. It doesn't match with demand. It also goes into the, into the, into, into the labor market. Job losses will follow naturally. These things will just go. I want to also, still sticking with the issue of food security in the country, I know the headers, you made mention of the headers from our clashes when you were talking about earlier. Now, what, 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 what will be the solutions you have to put forward to help address that? Because it has become perennial, and we have seen the federal government from, from its end also try to plug loopholes uh, al along that, that, that area to see that this menace comes to an end. What do you think are solutions that should be put forward? Now political will. I begin from there. The political will to take decisive action. I give you an instance. As we speak, the forests of the southwest are invaded by people who are also Nigerians and who have the, the belief, who subscribe, who, who, who cling to the, to the gospel of one Nigeria. And because it's one Nigeria, I can go anywhere, acquire lands, I can stay anywhere, I can... Uh, uh, do my business without uh, recourse to the fact that even if you come to my house to stay, you have to pay rent. I become your landlord. Even if you 
who have the same skin color as myself, even if you are Nigerian, I'm a Nigerian, I'm a Nigerian. Even if you are an Igbo man, I'm an Igbo, an Igbo man. You will still have to pay rent to use uh, my land or to use my house. So when somebody comes, people, as we speak, they are still there. And the, the people who are original owners and dwellers of these parts of the country says, if you cannot stay peacefully, then leave. And then there's a reprisal uh, attack from, uh, from the other section. And then those people feel leadership has not responded promptly to us. So what am I saying? Mm -hmm. The political will to first of all respond to issues come to negotiation and have conversation with people who have genuine cause for conversation. People say, come, let us go to, to the drawing table and have a discussion. Government is yet to say, we are ready, let us discuss. Once upon a time, there were agitations from the south, south, south. And the vice president of the, of the country traveled down and made a statement. He said, I heard you loud and clear. History has it that that was the end. The plight was ameliorated at that point. And so let's begin to have conversations. Conversations are very, very important and sacrosanct at this point. We must have conversations. If you are, if you are a leader and you are, you are leading people, even in your family, as a head of a home, your children need to hear from you. Mm -hmm. When my child sees me come home or smile in some way, if I, if I frown sometimes, my little daughter comes to me and says, Daddy, sorry. There's communication gap here. So it needs to be, we need to boost communication and conversation. Whenever people say, you see, truth, truth, if communicated wrongly, communication experts say, truth, if communicated wrongly, could, uh, could bring up, could elicit regrets. Yes. At the end of the day, you say, why did I even express this truth at this time? That sometimes you have to withhold some truth for the proper time to pass that message. And so, people need, at this point now, the, 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 the philosophical, the physical, and the psychological equanimity to absorb the crisis that we have here. And who is to elicit this? Leadership. Leadership needs to come to call people to table. And say it is time to discuss. People are willing to talk. Yes. People are willing to discuss. Yes. Ends as protest. Protesters wanted a conversation. They never got one. But I, th I, I think for the ends as protest, I think that we it was as a result of talks between parties involved that we saw the judiciary, the the judiciary panels of inquiry that were put up to we help address those talk. issues. How far did have we gone? That's one. Secondly, I talked about prompt response. Mm. How, you see, if there, was, if there was prompt response, instead, did you hear leadership threaten followership in the course of the answers protest? It was threat initially. But when we saw that these people are willing to, uh, like the, the proverbial uh, presentation, that uh, when you push, they go to the wall, it could bite. They're seeing that these people could react. And it, uh, the, the unprecedented could happen. And the government begins to set up. Uh, you see, today, because of that gap, I talk about the systemic rot is terrible. It's eating deep. And whenever I want to talk about it, I want to shout. The, you, you get news today. Negative news, negative vibes, negative sentiments. And then somebody in government who is supposed to be a spokesperson of the, of, of the president comes to make a statement. And then the narrative changes. And the president begins to, uh, or presidency, now begins to fine tune or chart a course to be able to kill the initial announcement and declarations. These are the problems we're having here. So there are, com there are gaps in communication. You may not be corrupt. You may have very good intentions. But good, translating good intentions to practical sense is a major issue. And I hold on to communication at this point. Political way to take decisive action and conversation. Mm -hmm. Government was ready to, take to, do, uh, to have conversation with people. Now, as we speak, if uh, the kind of crisis that took place in Shasha, and then we already begin to have this reaction. We have governments across, uh, 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 across the globe. We see how they respond to issues. Nothing stops presidency. Obviously, presidency, we're not referring to just the president, we're referring to one man. Paying a physical visit. When there was crisis at the Shasha market, the governor went there. 
You will agree with me that the president the governor is then it, the chief executive of the state. He's the chief executive of the state. That is what we are saying. Let there be let there be a collective response as we speak. The governor of Bauchi speaks a different language. The governor of Benue speaks a different language. Okay, Mr. There's Imano, no question there. Mr. Imano, time is never enough for conversations like this. But I just want to get your final thought. We've talked about lessons learned. You've mentioned the issue of political will, the importance of not leaving a gap in communications. Convers Any other thoughts yes. to that as we round off? Well, I make a passionate appeal to Nigerians to believe in the entity called Nigeria. If followers have some confidence in government government and government now come together governors at this point governors of the 36 states should begin to hold meetings and hold conversations as per how to talk to their people and then community policing is sacrosanct not only sacrosanct but inevitable at this point to boost trust to reduce suspicion to 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 boost confidence in people to 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 reduce the death of of uh, of uh, insecurity, the death of of trust, the death of of unity. Nigeria has been and has not been this divided. Community policing is very very vital because the community the community knows their forest. Mm -hmm. They know the tracks. Yes. The man if it's centrally organized and socially structured stru structured results may not come or results may come but at a very belated time. Thank you so much, Emmanuel Okoliko. He's an economist and also a public affairs analyst. And he has been talking to me about issues, issues that have come up from the food blockade or food strike, so to speak, in Nigeria. That ban has been lifted by all stakeholders involved. And like, you know, like he rightly said, we expect the prices to begin to normalize in coming days. Thank you for being on the program today. Thank you. It's my pleasure. And it is with that that we draw the curtains for our cosmopolitan markets today. Thank you for investing your time with us on the program. Kindly follow us on all our social media platforms on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube. This interview would be on YouTube, so you can always watch it back. My name is Christiana Amodu. Bye for now.